I was class valedictorian in med school, ranked third in the physician licensure exam back in 2017. I won several quiz bowls or academic competitions during med school and residency, and I placed first in the internal medicine board exam. And in this video, I'm gonna compress eight years worth of study advice and hard earned lessons. Let's get into it. Now, one of the most common questions I get from students who message me or those who I've mentored before is when's the best time to start studying for my exam? And whether it's for your weekly exams, your finals, or the big high stakes ones like the licensure examinations my advice is always the same start as early as you can like you don't have to wait until it's just a few weeks or days before the exam like because by that point it might already be too late i mean sure cramming might seem like it's working in the short term like if you study everything the night before yeah you'll probably remember most of what you've studied during the exam the next day right but as you probably already know what usually happens is you do remember most of it during the exam but after just a few days I mean you forget almost all of it because that's just how the memory works because since you crammed everything the night before your brain didn't have enough time to properly consolidate that information so after a few days you just forget most of it and so what happens when finals comes around and those same topics from your earlier exams show up again then you'll have to study everything all over again right because you've already forgotten most of what you crammed and also when you leave studying for the exam for the last minute everything just gets much worse like you'll be more stressed more sleep deprived and because you're trying to cram like for example a month's worth of study material and information in just a single night and that is not sustainable because you'll just burn out much quickly if you keep on doing that week after week and honestly it's not even effective plus if you start too late there's a good chance you won't get to study everything you need to for the exam and so you'll always feel like you're trying to catch up and you're stuck with this growing backlog of study materials and that's not a fun place to be in and that's why i always say to my students the best time to start studying for your exam was weeks months or even a year ago but the next best time is right now. Now, I know what some students are thinking, like isn't it kind of pointless to start early? Because obviously, you'll, I'll just forget what I studied by the time the exam comes around. But here's the thing, that's exactly what we want because forgetting and then relearning that same information over time, that's what helps it stick in the long term. Which brings us to the next study advice, which is space out your studying. Now, this next study advice might sound a bit counterintuitive, like especially if you're basing it on what we used to hear from our friends or classmates before and back when I was in high school and even in college I'd always hear the same thing like why would you study early if the exams still a month away I mean you'll just forget everything anyway right so instead they would go to parties play video games hang out on weekends and they tell you to just you know chill out because studying early didn't make sense to them and to me as well but that belief that you'll just forget what you study early on is exactly why space repetition works like space repetition is just what it sounds like like you're putting a space in between your study sessions or repetitions of that topic and that space could be a few days or a week two weeks or even a month and obviously the longer that space is the more likely you'll forget most parts of what you studied but actually that forgetting is the main reason it works because what happens is when you come back to that topic you realize that you've forgotten some or most parts of it and you push yourself to recall it that effortful recall is what actually strengthens your memory and that's what leads to deeper and longer lasting learning and now the next question i often get is how many days or weeks should i wait in between those study sessions and to be honest i haven't found a perfect number in any book or video that i've seen so far but what really matters is that there is some space in between but i've learned two things about that space actually so the first thing is that it shouldn't be too short like just a few minutes or a couple of hours because that's basically cramming because if you study something just a few hours after reading it of course it's gonna feel familiar and you'll obviously remember most of them but that feeling only gives you a false sense of mastery because you're just recognizing the information and not really learning it and so when the exam comes around you will realize that you actually have forgotten most of it and the second thing is that it shouldn't be too long either like months or years because by then you'll forget a hundred percent of it so you want to find that sweet spot just enough time to allow forgetting to happen but not so long that you forget a hundred percent of 
it. And now that brings us to the next question, like what should you actually be doing during those study sessions? And that leads us to the next tip, which is active recall. Now, I know some of you who have watched my last videos are probably getting sick of me saying this, but doing active recall, like it really made a huge difference in the way I studied. And it's the big, big reason why I passed all of my exams and I got high scores in most of them. And basically active recall is just the opposite of passive study techniques like highlighting, making notes or rereading because you're forcing your brain to actively recall that information instead of just passively absorbing them. And there are different ways to do this. Like you can use flashcards or do practice tests. But personally, if I'm studying for a multiple choice exam, like all of my board exams before, or even weekly quizzes or finals when I was in med school, I usually prefer to do practice tests instead of flashcards because practice tests, they simulate the actual exam, which, which has a question stem and a set of four options. Unlike flashcards, which only have short questions and short answers with none of the four options. And the only time that I would use flashcards is if I'm already a bit sick of doing practice tests or I just wanted to do something different. And also flashcards are great to do during downtime, like waiting for a bus or like you're lining up at the grocery store or while walking. Like I could just pull out my phone and do a few cards and stop at any time. And another Another downside to using flashcards, I think, is that the explanations in flashcards you see, like when you flip the card, they usually only have a few words or a single sentence. There's usually not much explanation about how that piece of information fits into the bigger picture. And I think that's what makes it harder to remember because it's hard to remember information like in isolation. Like for example, if I just tell you that the first line drug for rheumatoid arthritis is methotrexate, like it's harder to remember that on its own, it looks like a random fact. Like like without any context. But if I give you more context about that information, like methotrexate's mechanism of action, and that it's the first line drug, and if it fails, then the second line options would be like drug X or Y, then it's much easier to remember that information because now you're not just memorizing an isolated fact, you're now seeing how it fits into the bigger picture. And that's what I like about practice tests. Like they usually come with a longer explanation um, that helps you understand the full topic. And it gives me more context and helps me remember that information much better. Now, when you do practice tests, make sure that you're doing them actively, which means trying to come up with your own answer first before looking at the correct answer and its explanation. I mean, I know it sounds obvious like, that you should be doing that, but you'd be surprised how many students I've talked to before um, who just went straight into looking at the answer and the explanation. And when I asked them why, they would say that it's obviously so they can get through more questions or cover more topics. And sure, it's easier that way, but it also turns uh, doing practice tests into passive studying because you're just reading the questions and the answers without really engaging with the material. So if you want to remember more of what you've studied, try to answer the question first. And if you get it right, great. But if you get it wrong, you'll remember the explanation so much better after you see the correct answer and the explanation. Now, whenever I talk to students who didn't make it on their first try at their board exams, for example, um, I always ask them about their study strategy. And some of them actually did all the right things, like they watched the lecture videos, they used active recall, they did practice tests, but still they didn't pass their exam. So I asked them this question, how many hours of sleep were you getting while you were studying for the exam? And most of the time, the answer is either I was only sleeping around four hours a night, or I got seven hours, but I slept in the morning because I'm an night owl and I studied all night and slept during the day. Now that might work for some people, but if your board exam will happen in the morning and would start at say seven or 8 a.m. and your body is used to being asleep at the time, I mean, you're gonna have a hard time focusing because by that time, your brain is gonna feel groggy and you'll get easily distracted. So even if you're not a naturally a morning person, I mean, I think it really helps to train your body to be awake and alert during the hours that you you'll be taking the exam, which is usually in the morning. And also I would suggest to aim to get at least seven hours of sleep every night, because when you sleep, that's when your brain processes or consolidates what you've studied, which means transforming that short-term memory of what you've studied the whole day into long-term memory that you can use for your exam. And also your sleep affects your focus the next day. Chris Bailey mentions in his book, Hyperfocus, that for every hour of sleep you lose, you lose two hours of productivity the next day. So I always remind myself of that fact that if I stay up one more hour to finish what I was studying, I will end up or I might end up losing two hours of deep focus the next day. And that trade off, it just isn't worth it. And I've noticed this myself personally, like whenever I don't sleep well, the the night before I get more distracted and forgetful the next day. So there's just too many
any downsides to sacrificing your sleep and not enough upside to make up for it. Now, the next tip is one of those obvious things that we all know, but don't always do, which is removing distractions. And there are actually different kinds of distractions. Uh, there are internal ones like stress or personal issues and external ones like noise or interruptions. But the biggest one that we all deal with is our phone. Because, I mean, let's be honest, your phone is way more fun than studying, right? Like scrolling through TikTok or watching Netflix or YouTube. It feels much easier and they feel more satisfying than reading about neuroanatomy. So when you're studying, you need to keep your phone out of your sight, like literally put it in another room or somewhere that you have to stand up and walk if you really wanted to use it. Because most of the time, that small bit of friction is already enough to stop us from grabbing our phones. And that actually makes staying focused in your studying a much less difficult thing to do. Because just putting your phone face down on your study table isn't enough. Like if it's within your reach, the moment you feel even the slightest bit of boredom when you're studying, you'll pick it up without even thinking about it. And the next thing you know, you've been scrolling for like 30 minutes or an hour on your phone just because you didn't want to deal with that few seconds of boredom. So put your phone away and you'll definitely thank yourself later. All right, so we've basically talked about some pieces of study advice that I have learned the hard way over the last eight years and how you can use them for your exam. And if you're interested in more study techniques, then you might like to check out this video over here. It has three easy things you can do to study much faster and more effectively. Now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.